So this next part, we're going to go through um, splitting and changing bases. So when we manipulate numbers um, to make them usable for the index laws. And we're also going to have a look at uh, how to use your calculator to sort out index laws. So first of all, we've got um, our index laws that we just looked at. They can, most of them only be used when the bases are the same. And when I say bases, I'm talking about the numbers here that are raised to a power. Okay, so we know that here, for example, we couldn't multiply them and add the powers because the bases aren't the same. The same thing over here, we couldn't multiply these and add the powers because the bases aren't the same. We actually do have a couple of options though. We can manipulate the bases in two different ways so that they are the same and we can use the index laws. So we've got two options. We've got split the base, which is over here. And we've got find a prime base, which is here. Okay, we've seen prime base a little bit um, earlier. So I'm going to do that one first and then I'm going to show you how to split the base. So um, what the first thing I noticed here with these bases is that they're all um, could be a base of two. So when we say prime base, we're trying to take them back to a prime number raised to a power. So two squared or two cubed or three squared or five squared or seven squared. Okay, we're looking for a prime number that we can make these into. So that one's fine. That's already a prime number. This one, however, is not. But we could rewrite four as two squared. Okay, because two squared is four and then leave a minus three there. I'm going to leave the two alone because it's already prime. And this one here, we could take that into a prime base as well. Now that one there would be two cubed, a plus two. And that just takes a little bit of practice to identify them. If you see something like 25 or um, you know 49, you kind of trigger straight away that this could be a square number, but finding cubes can be a little bit more difficult. So now we've kind of got them into prime bases. We're just gonna simplify a bit. So here we're raising a power to another power. So we multiply. It's 2a minus 3, which is 2, 2a minus 6. That one's fine where it is. And this one here, we'd multiply 3 by a plus 2. Okay, so once we had it um, to that stage, we could then use the index laws. So we could multiply these by adding the powers. Okay, that's not an actual one. It won't work out as equals, or maybe it will. Um, but I'm not going to go through and do it. But what you would do when you have them all the same, you times these, add the powers. And then once you've got one uh, term here and one term here and they've got the same base, you drop the bases out and simplify the powers. Okay. So this next one over here, we're going to actually split the bases up. So it's kind of the same theory. We're going for a prime base. We're trying to find the prime numbers. So here, 2a plus 2, that one's fine. That's already a prime base. This one here is a prime base. But 14, we can actually split it. Okay, and we can split it into 7a plus 3 times 2a plus 3. Okay, so you can split the base um, by two multiples and then the rest will kind of fall into place. So here we couldn't um, simplify these two because the bases are different, but we could simplify those two. So it would be 7a plus 3 plus a minus 3 times 2. Okay, and then you'd simplify. So you'd end up here with two terms um, just because these bases are different. There's nowhere you can go. Over here, you'd end up with an A equals a number because we've got the equals sign there. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so two different ways we can manipulate splitting the base or turning it into a prime base. And they'll normally be part of bigger questions. But if you see, especially for 8, 16, 32, it's normally going back to a base of two. So now I'm going to go through some of these exercises that we did a bit earlier and I'm going to do them using the calculator just to show you how to use some of the functions. So all of these are calculations 
and most calc oh, most calculations we just do on the main screen. So I'm just going to go into the main tab there, um, and we're going to do each of them one at a time. So the first one, we're just going to type it in. So we're going to go to are uh, the letters there A and B. Some people do use X and Y, and then just remember and swap them back. That's fine. Probably the better way is to go into the alphabet and put in A. Okay, because then you don't have to, oh, you don't have to convert it later. Okay, B is squared times 6 A B to the power of 10. Okay, so we've got 12 A B to the power of 12. Okay, so quite simple. Let's try the next one. 10 a to the power of 5, this will be easier on your calculator because the buttons are a bit bigger. b to the power of 3 divided by 5, a to the power of 3, b squared. Okay, 2 a to the power of 8, b to the power of 5. Okay, so you can see that in an exam, if you do kind of a bigger one, um, keeping the same letters in there is really helpful because you don't have to um, remember to change it back and it also puts it in order. So if you use X for B and Y for A, or when you convert it back, it won't be in alphabetical order and you'll have your communication kind of in the wrong wrong place. So if you can use those letters, it makes it a lot easier. Let's try the third one down. So you know, bracket 3, A to the power of 4, B squared, b to the power of 3, close my bracket, that's all to the power of 2. Okay, so it's squared 3 there, so 9, a8, b4, c to the power of 6. Okay, next one down. Um, for this one, I'm going to use a fraction bar, so I'm going to go back to math. Um, you'll see that my calculator simulator here is the old calculator, but um, most of the buttons are exactly the same, and if not, they're just a little bit in a different place. So mine, I think your fraction bar is more on the main screen. So fraction bar is here. Um, I'm going to put a bracket around either side of it. Okay, and on the top I've got 2, a to the power of 4. And on the bottom I've got 3, x to the power of 3. Okay, and that whole thing is raised to the power of 3. Okay, and you can see there that it's given me an answer in decimal form, which we don't like. So I'm going to click down here where it says decimal. I'm going to change it to standard and press enter again. That looks better. Okay, so 8, a to the power of 12, 27, x to the power of 9. So there's a time and place for decimals and there's a time and place for fractions. Uh, you don't see decimals very often in this course, so the more you can use fractions, the better. So let's try the next one down here. 3, a to the power of 0 plus 2x to the power of 0, it's 5. Okay, and the very last one, using bracket 3 pretty much, typing it in, exactly how it looks. Um, b to the power of 8. And if in doubt, the more brackets, the better. Okay, you could have used 0.5 there. I'm just going to use a fraction. Okay, so that's the end of the little calculator bit. So if you can in class, just everything that you do, um, it's a textbook exercise, but it's an assignment question, just check it with your calculator because it, it gets um, easier as you use it more often. So try checking them as you go with your calculator uh, and let me know if you get stuck and we'll go through them.